Oh, hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28. Is everybody there? Let's start verse 1. Let's speak it. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently do what? Obey. It's not, the, I want you to understand something. There's a word before obey. It says diligently. That means fight. That means be consistent. Diligently. Diligently. See, how many of y'all know you can obey the wrong voice? Amen. So he said, now it shall come to pass if, if, when the word if is involved, it means cooperation. Amen. That means there's a requirement to be fulfilled. And he says, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments. That word commandments is not about the Ten Commandments. It's about his commands. How many of y'all know when God speaks, it's a command? Amen. Amen. Which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And verse 2, and all these what? Blessings, Blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. How many want to be blessed? Amen. How many be overtaken? Amen. Well, then he says you must diligently obey the voice of God. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. These blessings will come and overtake you. Verse 3. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be the fruit of your body. That means good health. The produce of your ground and increase of your herds. The increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. That means more income. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. That's food. Amen. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you what? Go out. Go out. Blessed shall you be, um, the Lord will what? Cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. I mean, man, how many? <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, what the snap, you know? The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you, who rise against you, to be defeated before your face. In other words, you will see it. Amen. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command a blessing on you in your storehouses. For some people, that's your closet. <laughs> in all to which you set your hand. And, or your jewelry box, forgive me. <laughs> and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, that means what he's telling you to do. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. Amen. The Lord will grant you plenty of goods, and the fruit of your body, and the increase of your livestock, and the produce of your ground, and the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in seasons. And bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Let me tell you, this means that when you're in divine position, you will not fall into debt. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and careful to observe them. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods or to serve them. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God 
to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today, then all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Let me share something with you that there is a battle between the voice of freedom and the voice of bondage. The voice of bondage is a curse. The voice of freedom brings blessing. Which one you obey is what you will become. One day you obey the voice of freedom. Two minutes later you obey the voice of bondage. Then what was blessed will also turn into a curse. So this is where we look at when you make the mistake, repent quickly and turn away. And John 10. I don't know one believer that doesn't want to be blessed. You'd have to be an idiot if you want to be cursed. But there must become a reality of who we are listening to. Where is this influence coming from? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And sometimes we need to go to the place of why did I do what I did? Amen. Just to expose the voice. Yeah. And John 10, verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his what? His voice. They hear his voice. See, first of all, there's got to be a desire for you and I to want to hear his voice. There must be a desire. Lord, I want to not only know you, but I want to hear you. Now, God's voice comes in multiple ways. Sometimes his voice can come into a vision can come into a dream. God is always speaking to me and you. He's always warning us, preparing us. Amen? And to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. A sheep is one who follows. Again, if you're in position, that's that place. You're always wanting to hear. You're always wanting to see what he's got. I don't want to miss what you have for me. You know, the word says that the enemy sets traps for us every single day. Amen? We don't want to step into a trap. It says here, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. He goes before them. We don't go before him. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Again, the word follow means to what? Believe. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. It didn't mean they wouldn't hear it. Yeah. You and I are going to hear the voice of the stranger. This is where the battle is. But yet they will not by no means follow the stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. In other words, we make it known that we don't want to know the voice. Amen? But obviously we know the voice of the stranger. You're going to know the fruit of the voice. Amen? In verse 6, Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said that again, most surely I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Again, that does not say find pastor. Amen. Amen. It says find pasture. Amen. Amen. Verse 10. The thief does not come except to what? 
steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen? Because if you find the pastor, he's going to lead you to the Lord no matter what. Amen. So you might as well go directly to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, the voice of the shepherd is known as the voice of freedom. Amen. Everyone say freedom. This is why what's shaking right now. That's why all, there's kinds, all kinds of shaking, all kinds of things going on. Because God is exposing the voice of the stranger, the voice of bondage that brings curses to people's lives. And he's releasing the voice of freedom in a greater. It's penetrating all over. In 2 Corinthians 3. When I was younger, a couple weeks ago, <laughs> for me as a young whippersnapper, rebellion was freedom. Does anybody get in? Come on, you remember those days. Rebellion was a form of freedom. We got it through music. That was the voice of music. It was telling everyone. So it was no longer enforced, so much enforced conviction by man because the voice of the stranger was taking over the voice of freedom. The voice of bondage is the ruler of this earth. So we are breaking out of tradition of the voice of true freedom into a voice of bondage by a false freedom voice. It's called rebellion. So sex, drugs, and rock and roll and all the other stuff, to be free to do whatever you wanted to do was actually bondage. I mean, think about this. Yeah, I'm free. All right. I couldn't wait for my wife to leave my first marriage so I could do more drugs. My belief and feeling at that time was she was causing me bondage. Come on, get this. Because I was demonized. And so anything that was interfering with what I wanted to do, according to the voice of the stranger, which brought curses on me and bondage, was interfering. As far as I was concerned, that was bondage. Hello. Because a life of sin has a sense of false freedom. But actually, it's a lie. It's bondage all the way to hell. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 3. Now I love my wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I accept her corrections <laughs> as freedom. <laughs> she warns me before I step on the trap of bondage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 12. 2 Corinthians 3.12. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? Amen. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at um, the end of what was passing away. But their minds, their minds were what? Blinded. They're blinded. Their minds were blinded. Their thoughts were controlled. Does everybody get that? They were blinded to the truth of freedom. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Now, I want you to understand something powerfully. The veil of the Old Testament is the veil of the old man. It is a veil of blindness. 
of the heart, the mind, and spiritual sight. It blinds us spiritually, it blinds us mentally, and it blinds us in the heart. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further, verse 15. But even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. That's why they reject Christ. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, Amen. one turns to the Lord, one turns to the Lord. In other words, you're turning to light from darkness. You're turning from curse to blessing. You're turning from bondage to the voice of freedom. Amen. The veil is taken away. So that means you and I must cooperate with that turn every time. The longer we take, the more we reap. Amen. Verse 17. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit. He is the voice. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. Does everybody get this? So again, only where the Spirit of the Lord is, is there freedom. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is not, there is not freedom. Amen. It is bondage, it is deception, and it is curse. Only where the Spirit of the Lord is, is there freedom. This is the law and command of God. Only where He is, is there freedom. Nowhere else. Nowhere. Hallelujah. This is a process that individuals go through when they come to the Lord. It is the removal of the voice of the stranger, the voice of bondage. It's the process. Amen? Until the voice of the Lord has control, which is known as the voice of freedom. Hebrews 1. I know I brew. <laughs> Hebrew chapter one. Hallelujah. Voice of freedom. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So praise and worship brings the presence of God, which brings the voice of the Lord. Amen. In verse 1, God, who at various times in various ways did what? He spoke. That means he spoke. Voice. In time past to the fathers by the prophets. So he spoke by the prophets in the time past. Amen. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become a much more or much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, this voice that was released through the prophets, but now is released through the Christ of Jesus. The Christ of Jesus. Does everybody get it? Why? Because what is the Christ of Jesus? The Christ is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, the anointing. The name that God gave the anointing in this realm that was incarnate in a body, he gave Jesus. Amen. Amen? Now, we know that, and the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. So he says he's releasing the voice of freedom, which he released through his prophets, now he released through the Christ that was in Jesus. Amen? Amen. And now through the Holy Spirit that was given by Jesus 
to you and I, he is known as the voice of freedom. Now, he will bring or establish or manifest his voice through revelations, illuminations, the written word that was recorded, interpretations of tongues, gifts of the Spirit, prophecies, to release those taken captive by the voice of deception and bondage. That's why he's moving mightily right now. Again, he said, God who at various times and in various ways spoke. And he's still speaking in various ways and at various times. You just never know. But we must be diligent to be alert, to hear, being willing to turn, being, being willing to stop. Amen? Amen? And being willing to go. In Ephesians 4, Hallelujah. You know, that's why the word tells us that in the latter days that many will be taken captive by deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. That's another voices. And then you've got so many false religions out there. It's incredible. But we're not religious. Amen. There's a lot of belief systems out there. Jesus never came to bring religion. He came to bring a military operation. Amen. And him as the chief and commander. Amen? Amen? I mean, he's the only one that rose from the dead. The other ones are still dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. They want to keep a dead legacy. We're going to keep a live one. Amen. Verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind or their thoughts. In other words, because they were under another voice, the voice of deception and bondage, which we thought we were actually free, but we were in rebellion. Having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to the work of uncleanness with greediness. But you have not learned the Christ or the voice of Christ. If indeed you have heard him, known as the voice of freedom, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off. Concerning your former conduct, the what? The what? The old man. Which grows what? Corrupt. According to the deceitful lusts. So he's still growing corrupt. The old man cannot be renewed. He must be crucified. And be renewed in the what? Be renewed in the what? In the spirit of your what? Your new mind. Ooh. Because you're a new creation. That you put on the what? The new man. Which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So it's our responsibility to get the new man activated and crucify the old one. Because the old man still has the voice of memory. He has the voice of pleasures of the world. I mean, he doesn't tell you about all the other stuff that happened. He just reminds you of all the times you partied and did this and that and all the people and all this and all that and everything that was we thought was freedom. But he doesn't tell you about the time you spent in jail, the fines, all the other things. All the hurts of yourself and your family. All the disappointments. He doesn't tell you about all those things. 
Amen? Amen. But here the new man is telling you now that you're a new creation. Let all of those go and step into the future. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Um, verse 25. Therefore putting away what? Lying. lying. There's a lying spirit that will come to you all the time too, you know. Put away lying. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who was in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace or God's plan to someone who's hearing and listening. And do not what? Do not grieve the voice of freedom. Do not grieve the voice of freedom by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Again, no longer are we to walk according to the voice of the ruler of the earth, which is still brings us bondage if we do. Amen? Amen? If people are still in bondage or lost, they've lost the voice of freedom. Because they've truly not really learned the voice of Christ or the Holy Spirit anointing, which is precious. It's precious to us. Precious. You know, people get moved by man's offenses and all kinds of other things. We and I need to hold on to that anointing, which is the most precious thing in our life. Because without the anointing, we're nothing. Amen? Many fall in position of grieving the Holy Spirit and lose his voice. But God always makes a way, doesn't he? He's a God that restores and reconciles. He's a God of forgiveness and mercies and grace. Amen. John 16. In verse 5, John 16, verse 5, voice of freedom. You know, Jesus' mission was to fulfill the Father's will. The Father's mission was to send Jesus to release the voice of freedom and to free his people that have been taken captive. That was the Father's mission. Does everybody get that? So that there was a price paid for everyone. In verse 5, But now I go away, says the Lord, to... To him who sent me, and none of you asked me where I'm going. But because I have said these things, you sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you that the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Well, what help don't you? I mean, think about it. We need help. Amen. We all need help. I need help every day. And when he has come, he will convict. Why? Because he has a voice. He's called the voice of freedom. He will convict. Why is he going to convict? To prevent us from what? Stepping into bondage or deception. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in him or in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. And of judgment, because the rule of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into what? All truth. In other words, truth frees you. 
So his voice is going to guide us to all truth because he is the voice of freedom. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Hello. He will tell you things to come. The voice of freedom. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. The helper is the voice of freedom, the voice of conviction, the voice of righteousness, and the voice of judgment. He is the voice of truth. He is the voice of escape. He is the voice of promise. He is the voice of freedom. And he is the voice of victory. Do I need to say that again? I'll say it one more time just in case. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's the voice of conviction, the voice of righteousness, the voice of judgment, the voice of truth, the voice of escape, the voice of promise, the voice of freedom, and the voice of victory. Woohoo! Luke 4. Oh, happy day. <laughs> Luke chapter 4. In verse 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was what? He was led. He was told by the Holy Spirit, by the voice of freedom, into the wilderness. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward when he had, eat, had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of God. But every word of God. Jesus was led by the voice of freedom to overcome the voice of bondage. So everybody get it? He was going to defeat the voice of bondage immediately. The voice of deception. The lying voice. But he could not overcome without aligning himself with the recorded written voice of dominion and promise and victory he had already been taking place. So he was just aligning himself what he had spoke already in the old. Amen? That was recorded from him. He's the one that spoke it all. The voice of freedom that spoke in the old was now being manifested and being spoken in the new. Many replace the voice of freedom with the voice of emotional feelings. Remember something very important that Everything is settled first in heaven, then manifested through us on earth. It was already predestined by the council. And it was released by the Spirit, the voice of freedom, and then come to me and you so that it can be released into this realm. Ephesians 2. Too many still rely on how they feel. And I'm not saying that feelings can't be painful. But we can't allow our mind to connect with the pain. 
we must make sure our, our mind is connected with his promises. Ephesians 2.1, let's speak it. And you have made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's a voice. The spirit, he calls him the spirit, who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience or rebellion, which is known as witchcraft also. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. That's God's plan. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith. Grace is God's plan. You've been saved through faith, which is your connection to God. And not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? Workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And one time you and I were walking according to the voice of deception, bondage, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, and fear. Remember two things, Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. But now we'll reject the voice of the stranger, attacking all areas with the voice of freedom. Amen. Now that we are to attack all these places with the voice of freedom, which supersedes any other voice. First Peter chapter one. That's why we made these shirts called, Who Told You That? Amen. Are you listening to the voice of freedom or the voice of the stranger? First Peter 1, verse 6. Is everybody okay? Again, there's a prophetic release of God's voice in a stronger way. Multiple ways. Is everybody there? Verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the what? Genuineness of your faith, the genuineness of your connection, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy unexpressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. For this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Therefore, good up the loin of your, loins of your mind. In other words, protect your thoughts. Be sober. Be alert. Rest your hope fully upon the grace, which is God's plan of escape, that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conform yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. 
And if you call on the Father who is without partiality, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as the lamb without blemish and without spot. Powerful. God is testing us, our connection. That's where he's testing our faith. He calls your connection the most precious thing to you, according to the uh, anointing also. So testing of your connection with the voice of faith, which brings the voice of freedom. Testing your connection with the voice of faith, which brings the voice of freedom. Remember, the gospel is nothing but the measure, I mean, the message of the voice of freedom. Amen? The gospel is a message of the voice of freedom. Hallelujah. Romans 8. You know, there's two things we must always understand. That number one, God never interrupts himself. Amen. And the other thing that's required is assembly. Without assembly, you'll easily be drifted. Eight twelve. Verse 12. Let's speak it. Romans 8, verse 12. Everybody there? Therefore, brethren, we are what? We are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. That means according to the voice of deception, bondage. Amen? Amen. For if you live according to the voice of the flesh, you will what? You will die. Wow. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For many are led by the what? Spirit, which is the voice of freedom. Spirit of God. These are called sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cried out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children and heirs of God and of joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Why? Because I know freedom comes through them. For creation was subjected to fertility and not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of the corruption into the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we are also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown without, within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption or redemption of our body. We want more. Yes. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Praise God. That means endurance. Amen. We are not debtors to the voice of deception, lust, bondage, or fear. We are to be led by the spirit of freedom. The voice of freedom. In Psalm 8. Psalm 8, verse 1. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants. You have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence, that means they have a voice, 
silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the what? The angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. Who's he talking about? Us. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. God has granted me and you dominion, authority led by the voice of freedom. And I want to close in Psalm 67. In verse 1, Psalm 67. God, be merciful to us and bless us. Cause your face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on the earth and your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, and let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, and let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall what? Fear him. Wow. So the purpose of those led by the voice of freedom is to bring the fear of the Lord to all the earth and rescue. Amen. 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 Listen, we have a call, we have a purpose, and we have a destiny we must fulfill. Again, this is not some religious act. This is a military operation by the king and commander and chief called Jesus, the anointed one in his anointing. But to be a part of his army, you must maintain the anointing and be led by the voice of freedom or you'll be misled. Amen. Amen. Stay connected. Stay empowered. Stay filled. Stay dressed and stay possessed with the spirit of the living God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that you'd bring revelation and impartation to each and every one of us here today that has received your word that has been released, that we be led by the voice of freedom all the days of our life. We welcome your counsel, correction, direction, conviction, and chastisement to turn us away from the voice of bondage, deception, worldly voice, voice of evil and lying and wickedness, that we may serve you in true spirit and in power. We commit this to you, Lord. We ask for your way and not ours. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.